What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at how to put together the ultimate tech pack for manufacturing purposes. So one of the main things that us designers face is how do we take the ideas that we have in our mind that we've sketched up and how do we translate them into a way that can be understood by the people that are going to be making our clothes. Sometimes these people are thousands and thousands of miles across the world and we don't have the ability. Sometimes there's language barriers between us and them. So how do we take this design? How do we translate it in a way that allows us to get the physical product as a perfect representation of what we designed? Well, that is what a tech pack is used for. But how do we do a tech pack? What is the core principles of creating a tech pack? What should a tech pack include? What is the format of the tech pack? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing in today's episode. And we'll start off by looking at one of our men's extended cargo joggers. I'll be taking you through each section of the tech pack and explaining what the importance is and how that contributes towards the final and finished result. So at the end of this episode, you have a blueprint, you have a way, and in the download links in the description, I will leave a base tech pack for you guys to download and for you to use as a skeleton for your own tech pack. Of course, you guys can mix and match and you can adjust sections as you need, but this I believe is one of the most compact, most comprehensive tech packs that you're going to need without any additional information and without anything that is left out. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design, and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? You are looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights, camera, action. We'll start off and you can get tons of our base tech packs for thousands of styles for pretty much over 700 styles on our website fitdesign.com and you can go into our digital downloads what you want is tech pack templates and this is what i'm going to be reviewing today we have all forms of sportswear loungewear we have dresses we have swimwear anything that you could want as a base to start a brand is available on fitdesign.com we'll look at our men's extended cuff cargo joggers and this is the first page so when you open up the tech pack your first page should be a visual representation of the product itself here we have we have 3D models that we've created in Clo 3D, and this gives us the ability to actually create a one-to-one -one perfect representation of the finished product. But you might have some sketches you created. You might have some technical fashion flats that you created. This is the page to put those in. What we have here is we have the mock-ups right front and center, and we have our front, our side, our back, our angle views. And what this does is it gives us a full 360 view of the entire design. So if we have an asymmetrical design, or maybe we have a pocket on the right side and no pocket on the left side, these views are going to give the factory a full overview of all of the angles of the design. Then we are going to outline the different parts of the design and the different colors used. If you look at this cargo jogger, we actually have a different fabric that's used on the cuffs and we have a different fabric that is used for the zippers, for the aglets, or different materials. So each of these parts is going to be represented by one color box. We have a part for the main fabric, and then we have a part for the print. Of course, in our base stack pack, we actually haven't put a print there. We just put a placeholder for where a print could go. Your jogger might be black, but your print on this color wave might be white. So you need to be able to outline to your factory the main fabric is white, is black, and the print that we're going to use is white. Then you have your drawstrings, you have your aglets. What are the colors of the drawstrings? Maybe you want the drawstrings on this to be black, and you want the aglets, which are the ends of the drawstrings, to be white. This page is giving you full clarity over all of the different components of your garment. Then you might have your zippers. Well, the zipper tape and the zipper teeth, these are going to be the mechanisms by which we close the pocket. What are the colors of those? What are the colors of the tape? What are the colors of the tooth? If you had a different fabric for the cuffs, then you would also use a similar box, call out the cuffs, and you would also give it a separate color. Here, what we're using is Pentone. You can use Coloro or you can use any centralized color of your choice, but the main two that we have on the market are Pentone and Coloro. And what this allows us to do is the digital representation of our color, make it as accurate as possible to the physical representation. Think of it as a key towards translating color from digital into physical so that when you send your tech pack to a factory, you're not just using a regular color. What you're using is a Pantone color that is represented accurately on screen and they can use that code and it'll turn out exactly as it is in real life. So I'll show you here a digital version of that color and then the actual as dyed version of that color. So that's the first page. One of the other main areas is going to be in this top sidebar. 
What I do is I always include the name of the product. I'll have the gender and I'll have the type of product. So here it's men's extended cuff cargo joggers. And then when we look at the second bar, what we have is contrast, style, colorways, and fabric. Contrast here typically tends to come down to if there's any unique additional fabric that is added to the product. So if you're creating a men's performance team and you have two fabrics in there, then your contrast fabric would be the mesh fabric. Or if you have a hoodie that has ribbed fabric on the cuffs and on the waistband, then your contrast here would be the rib fabric. At the same time, your style is essentially a unique code that you give to each product in your collection. If you have 10 products in your collection, each of these items would have its own style number. So you can see here, what we do is we use the first three letters of the brand, which for us is FDN, then it's dash, then it's the gender. So here we have M for men and W for women. And then we have dash, and then here we have a code for the product. Since we're dealing with joggers, we use the code JG. And then 01 represents the specific color or variant of that product. So if I had a jogger in three colors, I would have JG01, JG02, JG03 for each of the color schemes. And then we have the season that the product is launching, if it's fall, winter, or if it's spring, summer, and the year that it's going to be launching. And then we have the fabric. Here, I specify the percentage, the composition of the fabric. I specify the weight, which here is 155 GSN. I specify if it's a woven fabric, I'll specify the weft and the warp yarns. See here is 100 denier by 100 denier. And then I specify the construction methodology of the fabric, which is a basket weave textile construction. So this is the first page, then we'll move on to the second page. The second page is what I consider to be my sizing guide. On the right side here, I have my key points of measurement. And with these key points of measurement, what I'm showing is where are these measurements being taken? You can see I have my front rise that's denoted by the A, which is on the front. I have my waist half width, which is denoted from left to right of the top of the waistband. And I have my out seam, which is pretty much on the out seam. And then I put a note there that says all measurements are made with the garment laid flat on the table and measured from seam to seam. This is a caveat because my measurements are not worn. These measurements are not taken when the garment is worn on a body because it can get stretched out and that can skew the measurements depending on the size of the wear. By keeping them flat on the floor, this gives us the most accurate representation of those measurements. Then I have my sizing chart that says small, medium, large, XL. Depending on what sizing scheme you're going for, you can go for XS to 3XL. It depends on your unique requirements. If you're starting off for men, I recommend sizes small to XL. If you want to add additional size, maybe 2XL. And then for women, XS to L. If you want to add additional sizes, maybe XL. And then here I will show the grading. So you can see the size medium increases between your front rise, you have approximately a 0.5 increase. Of course, these measurements will change depending on the point of measurement taken, but we've done separate videos in the past where I've gone through each and every single type of product from shorts to joggers to hoodies and shown how we create and where we measure those specific products. The next page we have is what we consider to be our technical sheet. This is one of the most important pages on the document for three main reasons. One is it actually gives you a visual representation of the garment laid flat on the floor. Two, it gives you all of the measurements. It gives you the key points of measurements that we described on the previous page, but it also gives you things like the height of the waistband, the height of the cuff, the thigh opening half width, the gusset, all of these main measurements that a pattern maker at a factory is going to need in order to turn this design into a physical reality happens on this page the size of the pocket, the size of the zippers. Nothing is left undone. This is a pure technical flat. So it's basically a representation of the garment laid completely flat on the floor and we trace over the edges. You can have a similar effect with a fashion flat with similar points of measurements. Get specific with this. You only need to create one specific measure. For us, it's a size medium because that's the size that I typically test out the garments in. And then the factory can use the sizing guide page in order to see what your grade rules are. Grade rules are essentially the increases or the amounts of increments between each size for specific points of measurement. Where your front rise measurement might be a 0.5 increase, your LC might be a plus one increase. On the technical sheet page, we also add specific areas. If we have our logos, we would add our logo directly on here. We would showcase where the logo is positioned in or what measurements to the nearest possible seam lines. So if I had my logo on the thigh, not only would I give the width, but I also might give the distance below the waistband. And I might give as well the distance away from the center front line. So I might give this distance and I might give this distance. That way you're allowing the factory to exactly plot where that logo is and in what size that logo is going to be. Next up, we have our basic specs page. The basic specs page serves two main purposes. No matter how good your drawings 
are, even if they're 3D models that are modeled 100% accurately, sometimes there are the finer details that are so small that you may want to blow up. You may want to provide a actual visual reference to showcase, and this is what that page is for. The key things that I mentioned are the type of waistband construction on this jogger, the drawstrings, so what type of drawstrings they are, are they polyester, are they cotton, what type of braiding, I mentioned what the aglets or how the aglets are made, how they're attached, I mentioned the cuffs, what type of cuffs they are, are they casing cuffs, are they elasticated cuffs, I mentioned what type of zipper puller, the construction of the fabric, so on and so forth. So each of these bubbles I have listed out here, and then I have a corresponding bubble that links directly to the mock-up. So with the elasticated waistband, I have it linked to B. With the center folded cuffs, I have it linked to the cuffs, so on and so forth. At the same time, I also provide the position of the care label. Each garment you're going to come across is going to have either a printed neck tag and or a care label as well. This is a great page to showcase the size of the care label and where the care label is going to be attached. So here we have our care label attached to the center rear waistband and I've used a blue or a yellow bubble to denote that. Moving down, we have the second page in case we need any additional but basic specs in order to add, but that's pretty much it for the basic specs. Once I have my basic specs finalized, I will add my trims and my notions. Trims and notions are going to be any pieces of physical hardware that are added onto the garment that are not fabric related. So on this garment, I definitely have my zipper puller. This is a tape puller that is unbranded and I need to specify the material. I need to specify what the puller tab is made out of, which is a rib webbing weave here. I need to specify if there's any branding on it, what type of branding, the size of the branding, so on and so forth. So if I had my logo on here, I would also add my logo on here and I would specify the width of it. I might add a fourth box that indicates what type of printing. Is it screen printing? Is it heat transfer? All of these things should be mentioned on this page. Moving down, I have my branding elements page. So this is a dedicated page for all of the branding elements, all the logos, all the graphics that are attached or that are put onto the garment, I put on this page. So if my garment has a logo on the thigh and a logo on the pocket, I would have index A and index B. Each of these indexes, I would have a vector perfect logo. That way my factory can get into my file and they can grab the logo directly from here. A bonus is if your, gar if your logo is scaled correctly. So if you have a two inch wide logo, then having it as two inches wide on this page is a major plus. But if it's not, then feel free to specify two inch wide logo printed on the thigh, positioned below the waistband and away from the garment center front. Depending on where the logo is positioned, you're need to going to adjust that word. Next up, we have our color swatches page. So in this tech pack, I showed you one colorway, but chances are you may have the same design in multiple colors. Maybe you have it in black, maybe you have it in red, maybe you have it in green. This is a place for you to have a table that denotes all the colorways with all the different combinations. A good example is if I had a black jogger with a white print and white drawstrings, my colorway one would be black for the main, white for the print, white for the drawstrings, and white for the aglets. But if my colorway two, red with black print and white drawstrings, then I would have red for the black for the main, I would have black for the print, and then white for the drawstrings, so on and so forth. This gives the factory and yourself a consolidated space to see all the different combinations, so that way when they're dyeing the fabrics, when they're dyeing the trims, they know what quantities of each of these different dyes they're going to need. Last but not least is going to be our packaging and labels page. So on this garment, I have a simple woven satin care label with a screen printed branding application. And what my care label has is my logo, it has the country of origin, it has the fabric composition, the washing instructions, and it has the fold arrangement and where it's attached. Also, I have a separate simple loop that attaches to that original care label and that has the specific sizing on it. The way we do it this way is to allow our customers with lower minimums to be able to have separate printed net printed designs that they can just attach to them. So they can make a certain quantity of the core care label, and then we just attach these simply depending on the size. That way your customer, when they're opening up their product, they know which size they're getting. This is pretty much it when it comes to my ultimate tech pack tutorial. If you include all of these main parts, Believe me when I say you're going to give yourself and your factory immense clarity over your designs. You're going to make sure that your sample is perfect, 
pretty much from the first round or you're just going to have minor adjustments in order to create. The last thing that you want is to get into a back and forth with a manufacturer, sending them pictures, sending them texts, sending them links because you're only going to confuse them and you're going to confuse yourself and you're going to find that they don't want to work with you in that way. It's not a way that is professional. It's not a way that is going to lead to success for any of the parties involved. If you want ready-made tech packs that you guys can edit, you can edit the colors off. I have done a separate video in the past where I've shown you how to use our tech pack templates. We actually have over 700 different base garment styles that you can download from our website at the link that I'm attaching below. And if you're watching this video, I'm going to give you guys a fit design family, 50% discount for the next 72 hours from the launch of this episode. So you can use FDTV 50 on checkout for 50% off any tech pack templates. And I guarantee you, even if you just get one, it's going to give you as the basis that you need to create the greatest designs and to even build off of for your unique use case scenario. Guys, let me know if you guys think we should add any additional pages or if we missed out anything. Let me know what other tech pack templates you want to see next on our website. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please consider smashing a massive thumbs up. It really helps us out. And let me know what other tutorials you want to see in the future. From the very bottom of my heart, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.